the descent of the governed. I am an anarchist because the state's claim to justified authority is implausible. Contrary to what its defenders claim, that claim cannot be defended by an appeal to the supposed consent of those the state seeks to govern. The United States has an official political theory. It's a theory embodied in the familiar words of the second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence. Quote, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Unquote. Note the central phrase, governments acquire, quote, their just powers from the consent of the governed, unquote. I think it points to the view of state power many Americans would accept automatically, and there's something very plausible about it. After all, the people who formulate and implement the government's decisions are just that, people. If, as the Declaration also insists, all people are equal in moral worth and moral rights, then no one, no emperor or king or prince or pope or lama or imam, but also no president or senator or governor, has a natural right to rule. Because no one has a natural right to rule, any claim to rulership is inherently suspect. So the basic moral equality of persons to which the Declaration testifies creates a presumption of anarchy. If people are morally equal, it's up to the person who maintains that someone has authority over others to show why. Where is this authority supposed to have come from? What's supposed to ground it? Consent and Authority the Declaration has an answer to this question. A governmental authority might have the right to rule over me if I gave it that right. No one is naturally a ruler, but, suggests the Declaration, someone could acquire the authority of a ruler if the people she or he is supposed to rule consent. But it would be hard to point to any existing state whose authority rests on the actual consent of the governed. Have you consented to the authority of the state in whose territory you live and conveyed your consent to the authorities? Have your friends? Do you know anyone who's done so? It's not surprising, I think, that in a July 2010 poll, 62% of Americans said the U.S. government did not have the consent of the governed, while another 15% said they weren't sure. Seven in ten of those survey also reported believing that the state and, quote, big business were on the same team, unquote, allied against ordinary people. Voting as consent Some people will argue, of course, that you've done so just by voting. But have you really placed your stamp of approval on the state just because you opt to vote in its elections? It's not obvious that you have. Suppose you live in a small town that's invaded by a group of bandits. The bandits, we may suppose, are an active lot. They won't all live in your town. Instead, they want to collect tribute from many neighboring communities but they intend to occupy your village in order to keep everyone in line, to make clear their benevolence, and to help co-opt you and your fellow townspeople into supporting their rule. They announce that you'll have a choice between two of the bandit chief's lieutenants, Jean and Chris. One will rule your village, but you'll get to pick 
the one who does. Chris is given to violent rages, while Jean tends to be calmer and more agreeable. So you and most of your fellow villagers express your support for Jean. Is there any reason to think that, by picking Jean, you've endorsed the bandits' occupation of your village? Given a forced choice, you've selected the option more likely to benefit the village, but surely doing this isn't the same as supporting the presence of the bandits. Surely the same is true when you decide whether to vote in a national, state, or local election. Your choosing to vote provides good, if not overwhelming, evidence that you prefer the candidate for whom you voted to the others. But it provides no particularly good reason to think that you want to be ruled by one of the candidates, or indeed that you want to be ruled by anyone at all. Immobility as consent. According to another statist argument, simply remaining within a state's territory somehow constitutes consent to its authority. But there's no obvious reason why this should be so. Certainly, remaining in the territory claimed by a given state isn't most naturally read as signaling support for the state's authority. Perhaps I remain there because opportunities for work are plentiful, or because my friends are there, or because I like the style of architecture, and perhaps I don't because gangs of thugs seem to be in charge everywhere else. It's not obvious that staying put would convey to a reasonable observer the message that I likely consented to the state's authority. What is it exactly about my remaining that is supposed to convey the message that I accept the authority of the state? Well, perhaps the state posts signs throughout its territory reading something like this quote, Whoever remains for more than 24 hours within the territory shown on this sign and marked out by various similar signposts thereby signals consent to the authority of the sovereign kingdom of Bozarchia. Unquote. If so, so what? There are lots of reasons, as I've suggested, why people might stay just where they were other than their consent to Bozarchia's authority. Staying put doesn't signal consent. Bozarchia has to claim that it constitutes consent. The rulers of Bozarchia could reasonably claim that it constituted consent to their authority only if they already had legitimate authority over the territory in which the signs were posted. If they did, then, under at least some circumstances perhaps, they could legitimately insist that people leave. In this case, people staying might be acting in bad faith if they chose to remain on conditions other than those set out by Bozarchia's rulers. Even then, if they made clear that they didn't consent and Bozarchian authorities let them remain anyway, the authorities' argument would lose a lot of its force. But if the assumption is that a state with authority over a given piece of territory can insist that people either do what it says or leave, there's a fairly obvious problem in this case. What Bozarchia is supposed to be trying to do in this example is to establish its authority, a procedure for establishing the state's authority that assumes that the state already has authority doesn't really demonstrate much of anything. The would be rulers of Bozarchia might have the right to demand obedience from people already obligated to accept their authority. But whether they have any authority is just the point at issue. It's easy to imagine my posting signs asserting my authority and insisting that people who remain in their homes accept my authority by doing so throughout the neighborhood in which I live. If people in the neighborhood failed to take them down and failed to move, would they be accepting my authority as their local ruler? Surely not. And they would clearly be well within their rights simply to ignore me. That's because I have no authority to insist that they accept my rulership or leave their homes in the first place. The idea that remaining in a state's territory amounts to consenting to its authority doesn't work. Remaining doesn't signal consent. It conveys too many possible meanings. 
and remaining amounts to accepting the state's authority only if we've already established that the state actually has authority in the first place. There's good reason to think that many people haven't consented to the state's authority. But there are people who do support the state's authority, and they want the rest of us to fall in line. They want to insist that we owe the state obedience. Do they have any arguments left in their quivers once we've shown that we don't consent to the state's authority? Either that we never consented in the first place, or that we've withdrawn our consent after realizing what a disaster the state really is.